Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, we'll be showing you how to fit a reverse camera in a camper van. Um, I'll see a lot of people will probably do it differently, but this is how I'm going to be doing it. We're going to be fitting a Jirai reverse camera. So this is the model we're fitting here. Um, it has obviously two trigger inputs. So we get reverse camera. It looks like it's got night vision as well. Um, 20 meters of data cable, fitting cable, and bracket for the monitor. Comes with a remote, and obviously monitor as well. So let's make a start. So this is the camper van we'll be fitting it to. Here we got 190LX. The Mobile Veta design. Um, this has had the camera fitted before uh, here, but for some reason it got removed. So we're going to be using these as our mounting points and this for our cable to go through. Ideally, I would have rathered go underneath, but I don't want to make any more holes. So we're going to utilize these pre-made holes already. So obviously it comes with a rubber gasket for mounting, which makes it more watertight. So we check our holes have already been lined up, so it's probably had the similar design on already. So uh, I think we can use some self-tappers or some M6 bolts. Right, so we've got our um, hole saw bit now for this rubber to grommet to go through. 22 mil, so we're going to be pilot all in that now and putting that through. All right, so I'm just going to basically drill a 22 mil hole just in the skin, and then drill a smaller one in the inside to get the cable through. Just gone through there, and then we'll drill a smaller hole now, uh, just for the thinner cable. Looking at it then, a 19 mil is adequate for this job, as we want that just big enough just to take that. So we'll drill the internal that size now. Then we're through. All right, so now what I want to do, obviously, because the rubber seal goes around here and it sits underneath here. Obviously, we've got a lot of this polystyrene, so I just want to go in and just clear some of this off just so there's a step just inside for the rubber seal to go into. Otherwise, it won't sit nice. So we'll go and do that now and then we'll file any excess roughness off so it doesn't damage the seal all right so next up we're going to trial fit this through and see what it sits like that goes through there i'm just going to trial fit our seal now you want it to be quite tight going in you know it's gonna seal nice night so see should seal nice nice what we're gonna do now we're pull it back out and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna follow the this cable in once it's in and run some sealer inside here and pack it back out so it seal from the inside as well Obviously there's our hole there, so hopefully when it's in, it's not going to stand out because obviously people will be from here, so it'll be out, hidden out of the way. I'm just trying to utilise the holes that's already been put into the camper, don't want to put any more in, 
So then what we're going to do then, we're going to be running the cable down there, remove the corner plastics which hides any connections, joins like that, and that's where we're going to be running that cable in from there. And down through here, which then we'll take it out through the van and we'll run it up the chassis channels to the front and then bring it back in through the engine bay for most probably. We shall see. Right, so obviously before we do put the wiring in finally, let me uh, just see if these stainless steel fastening screws are going in nicely. And then pull them back out, fill these with silicon again, and then mount a camera base on, obviously to help keep the weather out even more. That's my holes drilled, well, re-screwed. So I'm using Pureflex 40, which can be got from Screwfix or Tool Station. It does take a little bit of time to cure, but it is good stuff. So I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna put some just inside these holes and sat on the top. Sorry, when we put the bracket on, it's gonna uh, give another weather seal. Just like that. So obviously when you screw it in, it pulls it down with it, and then the bracket sits on here, and seals all around it. Also, don't forget the uh, other weather strip as well to go behind it. So that's all fitted now. Um, I've been measuring from here and here, making sure it's all square. It seems to be square, obviously it's pulled it ever so slightly in there, but when the camera goes back in, it'll be fine. So now we're gonna insert the cable in through here and just pull the grommet, follow in some silicon and clean all that up once it's sat in there. So that's the camera now mounted. We haven't finished that off yet with putting the, the light guard on top. Because obviously once we get the camera set up, we want to angle it and position it correctly. Um, so now we're going to start running this cable to save the ass of running 20 meters through that way. We're going to go that way. So we're going to start from underneath and just go up through there to meet the camera connection. Right, so judging where we want to go through, uh, we've got to bear in mind the power cables and the smaller cabling going down. So, really speaking, we're going to be coming through roughly around here. So we'll go just the side of them ones. Hopefully, easy access underneath, or might have to drill from the top. We'll see. So yeah, I can get access under here, hopefully. Although I do think it's probably better to uh, go from the top, maybe. We'll try it. But looking at their actual original timbers, they don't look too brilliant. Looks like some dampness has been getting in already. Right, so we're taking our 19 millimeter hole saw bit again. Just enough to get the cable through. We're gonna drill through there now. Remember just to go gently, so we don't catch anything the other side as well. So that's our hole drilled. Next, to start feeding the wire through. Pull enough through so we can connect it to a camera lead here. Sorry about the light, guys. Screw it together. Obviously, you can see it only goes one way because it's got that little dimple there, which only allows it to go one way. So screw that into there. Obviously, then we'll tidy it all up across here. Run it down 
there neatly. So once it's joined back up, pull this rubber down over here, which keeps moisture out of the connection. Right, so that's our cable coming down here. We're going to run it all the way down the chassis and take it all the way down to the front. Run it with the other cables. Hopefully, no, nothing major power, so don't major interference with the signal. And then we'll find somewhere at the front to uh, access the cab. Okay, so that's all the wire one ran from underneath it now, uh, up through the engine bay, and it goes in through that grommet right there. So now time to uh, secure it up underneath cable ties or, and then just make sure it's not too tight and it's not going to snag or rubber and then we'll get this monitor fixed now. So we've got all this wiring through now. Um, obviously, excuse all this. I haven't put all this in. Obviously, some fitted cruise control or something. But, so now our aim is to get this monitor mounted. So the customer, sorry, focus your damn thing. The, fo um, the customer said that he wants it there. So if I put it there, it won't be in line of vision. So it should be all right. So I'm thinking. So obviously either way there's going to have to be a hole put for the wiring I'm not leaving it running around here so I'm thinking about going in the back here and then uh, lift this up to pull the wire through and at least it'll be all neatly tucked out the way then we'll see this is where the fun begins obviously drill the hole at the back here but the old dash is underneath there but there's a void running down this side here so now it's a fishing game I'm gonna get some welding wire or some normal wire now and then we're gonna feed that into the dash run it around down to this bottom section here and then we're going to tape it onto the other end this end here I'm going to tape it onto there so it keeps that so when I pull it it pulls it straight um, so wish me luck this is how it's going down so first task getting it up to that corner there so we've wrapped it round taped it up and then hopefully if we pull this wire it should hopefully pull up I'm going to have to use two hands on this one. So that's the first section. <coughs> Sounds easy enough, and it obviously just put your hand up there, but there's so many voids up there, you can't get your hand up there. So now I'm going to leave that wire on there, but run another wire through this hole here, through here, and then that way I can snake it through there, hopefully. And there we have it through the dash obviously when it's all put back together it's all going to be neatly wire tucked was another issue because this top dash section here is all double skinned so obviously I've got my one external hole there so I have to go through another one so I can actually get the cable through sorry about the camera focusing rubbish sorry so now we're going to connect a monitor up to that and then we're going to push it back into the dash so it's only going to be that section there that's left out but obviously once it's in it's going to be behind it so it's going to be hidden so we're just going to uh, start mounting the camera up now so there we have the monitor mounted obviously uh, comes with a decent 3m sticky pad it's done not sorry about drilling any holes so as you can imagine now driving down the road now it's not in line of vision and you can monitor the Toad's car behind, making sure it's still there. Um, so, <clears throat> so you need to uh, hoover up, yeah. But as you can see, the wiring goes at the back there, nicely out of sight. Just got to put all these trims back on now and get the rest of this wired up. 
So obviously now we're going to do is just uh, quickly put wire it all together uh, before we lose the hen tails heading somewhere. I'm going to put this lead that's come from the back camera into cam one. There's that one there. So obviously put them in together. And then we need permanent life, the red, ignition, uh, not permanent life, sorry, ignition life on the red and earth on the other one. And then the other two trigger wires, trigger one and trigger two. Um, one obviously usually goes to the reverse light switch and the other one you can use as an override. don't know why, but you can actually access it so it's permanently on um, via the settings on the monitor. We're just going to um, just double check that it all works before we finalise it. So we're going to let's see where we can pick our earth and power up now. So I've just um, obviously earth and point here on that bolt, just piggybacked off this other wire here for the cruise control at the minute, so she should work. There we have it. Reverse light comes on with ignition. Obviously that's without any trigger wheels and this is how the customer wants it. He wants it on permanently, so happy to say that that's sorted. Good clear image on there too. Angled right. So now it's uh, time to finalise all this wiring and get it all tucked away neatly. That's all the wiring finalised in here. Um, had a little bit of a tidy up of the other wiring but not my place to but looks a bit neater and less cluttered and when we put the trim back on here it's not all dangling down here. So there we have it guys. That's how we wire up these cameras. Hope it's uh, been informant for you. So you just need to lock that up and then that's finished. And there's the camera all finished as well. So, thanks for watching guys, see you again.